Welcome to the Boardwalk Wealth Market Spotlight, where I do deep dives into the markets around the US, which I feel are ripe for multifamily investing success. I'm Umar Khan, the founder of Boardwalk Wealth, and today we'll be looking at Sioux Falls, South Dakota. The Sioux Falls market has grown at an astonishing 2.3% growth rate for the past 30 years. So it's gone from about 100,000 um, in 1990 to over 200,000 right now. When we compare it to darling markets, superstar cities like Dallas, where I live, by the way, right? That growth rate is about 1.3% and kind of declining, right? And the reason why I point this out is because this is a long-term trend. It's a secular trend. The population is growing for multiple reasons, a lot of which we're going to talk about. But that's the biggest thing we as multifamily operators and developers look at. Hey, where's the population growth? How much is it happening? How does it compare to the averages? How does it compare to the outliers? How much does it compare to the national average? And then how is the income growth? How, what size is that? And how diversified is the economy? What is the affordability, right? right? So let's get into that. median household income is about 61,800, give or take. But check this out. The unemployment rate is 2.1%. And right now, nationally, our unemployment rate is, I think, about 3.4%. We're already hearing rumblings from the Fed, uh, Federal Reserve, basically saying the unemployment rate is so low that in their minds, that's causing inflation. So in you know they want to increase the unemployment rate. And this is why we're seeing they're jacking up the interest rate. So to give you an example, 3.4% is where America nationally were considered were kicking ass, right? And the unemployment rate in Sioux Falls is even lower than that. So if you think we're crushing it on the national level on unemployment, well, whatever is more than crushing it, Sioux Falls has been consistently doing that day in and day out. And this combination of, you know, low unemployment, population growth, high incomes that we've talked about, and now we're going to talk about affordability in a second. Well, this is a very attractive package to both employers, because as they're looking to move there, but also to employees. And a big reason for why all of this is happening is the highly diversified economy that Sioux Falls has. So again, I'm going to compare it to Dallas. This is another superstar city with a highly diversified economy, but everybody knows about it, right? Now, Dallas is highly diversified. So when, say, commodities are down, manufacturing, financial services, other sectors are up. And when they're down, commodities are up. So it's a very good balancing mechanism that Dallas has, and that's why it's such an attractive place to live. Well, Sioux Falls has a similar sort of diversified economy, right? The key drivers, the key uh, niches, the key industries are healthcare, financial services, manufacturing, and food processing and agriculture. Now, I want to really talk about healthcare and financial services particularly because, I mean, I've been in finance, my wife's uh, in healthcare, so I can really talk about that. Both of these are sectors that have really high paying jobs. Not only are they high paying, they also tend to be very sticky. So what does this mean? This means that you can't just say, if you're a doctor for a community, right, or you're a nurse in a community, you the probability of you sitting in Mexico or California or Canada and doing your job and catering to that community, it's very less. Telemedicine might work, but it doesn't really work on a mass scale. So when you have an agglomeration of great healthcare industry, well, those are people that physically need to be there. And when they're physically there, they're highly paid. That is a net boom to the economy. On the financial services side, typically when we think about financial services, we think about the high playing jobs, right? Investment banking, private equity, buy side funds, venture capital, blah, 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 you name it, right? Well, the real genius here is, and I have to credit uh, Florida for this, because I think Florida about 10, 12 years ago, realized how important back office jobs are. So these are jobs like AP clerks, account receivable people, bank reconciliation people, accounting people. How important and sticky these jobs are because even in a downturn, these jobs aren't easily fireable because when you're a company, you need your back office staff regardless of what your front office is doing. So Florida started attracting a lot of people. In fact, I think Deutsche Bank built one of their headquarters in Jacksonville, and that was a big move. Similarly, Sioux Falls and the South Dakota economy have a massive back office operations of major financial companies and intermediaries there. Again, whether it's boom or bust, these jobs are highly needed because, frankly, companies can't work without them. And that's why these are very sticky jobs. 
These jobs, when you get them, they stay. These people don't leave because they can't. You need these people, right? And lastly, on manufacturing, this is very high-tech robotic manufacturing. This isn't something you ship to China or Taiwan or whatever, somewhere in Asia. This is high-tech, cutting-edge manufacturing. Again, highly paid, but a very growing part of the economy. So you can see it's highly diversified, right? Now, as I was going to say, we have to go down to the affordability type. Why is this so attractive? Why is the population growth coming? Because look, California is pretty attractive. There's supposedly lots of jobs to pay a lot. But why are so many people leaving California? The reason why so many people are leaving California is affordability. Because even if you make two, three, four hundred thousand dollars a year in parts of California, you are practically poor, as weird as that sounds. Well, here, Sioux Falls has a 92 out of 100 rating, which basically means that 100 is a national average. So Sioux Falls is 92, which is significantly below the national average for affordability. The Milken Institute, the highly respected Milken Institute, has named Sioux Falls as one of the top 10 most attractive towns and cities to live in America. And on top of that, Sioux Falls was voted the best most affordable place to live in the United States. Now, this study, it was a very extensive, statistically thorough study. And let me read some of the factors there. So what did this study take into account? 20% uh, of the weight was given to wage growth. Unemployment rate was about 10%. Job growth was 20%. Percentage of jobs open was 10%. Rent affordability was 15 Home ownership affordability, I think, was another 15 And real capita personal incomes were 10%. Really thorough, really, you know, thorough statistical study. It votes Sioux Falls as a top place to live in America from all angles, right? Now, lastly, coming to amenities, there are six major colleges and universities in Sioux Falls that cater to a wide variety of needs and programs. But most importantly, because some of these are research programs, they're already attracting top tier talent. And when you know, when top tier talent comes somewhere, it attracts other top tier talent, right? It's like a magnet. And all of these top tier talent are again, people, high paying jobs, very sticky jobs, and they tend to stick, stick around, right? And when you combine all of that with basically no state income tax, which is basically the calling card of great states like Texas and Florida and a couple of other states, I feel, you know, you have a strong economy. And then most importantly, you have a low vulnerability to natural disasters, right? Again, using the California example, right? Highly vulnerable to earthquakes. Florida, love Florida, but got lots of hurricanes, right? Insurance prices are through the roof. Sioux Falls in South Dakota, they have a very low vulnerability to natural disasters. So that's another really attractive feature. And lastly, the state of the real estate market is such that it is very, very, very tight. Sioux Falls now specifically is coming on the institutional capital radar. So as we've seen so much institutional capital flood into places like Phoenix, Dallas, Atlanta, Tampa, but you know, you name it, any big city you name, right? Now that flood of capital is coming to Sioux Falls and we are right at the cutting edge of it. In fact, we're delivering one uh, of our developments blue on the rain. Uh, I think mid-May, end of May. And we had underwritten, I think, two-bedroom grants around 1500 give or take, maybe some, someone in that range. Well, we're now getting about $2,600 to $3,000 as two-bedroom rents, just to show you how quickly the markets move. Part of that, I would like to think, is the quality product we're providing. But another part of that is the fact that the supply is very tight. And as institutional capital comes in, more and more supply over a period of time will come, but that's like a 10 year plan. So when you're right at the cutting edge, right? When you're right at the start of markets, which are poised to explode and grow, you're right over there, right from the start, you are able to get incrementally high returns, exponentially high returns. And you don't make incremental gains, sorry, right? You don't make like a one, two, 3% gain your gains are much higher. This is why when we do this deep data-driven research, we find out these gems and we get there before other bigger money gets there because by the time bigger money gets there, we already have product to sell them at a premium. And that's why we love the Sioux Falls market.